Hi YouTube, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can find me on the web, CaltonCutlery.com. Okay, so, off camera, um, well this is a continuation of uh, uh, dressing the, uh, the fine side of this silicon carbide stone. Uh, we're going to go ahead and dress it to 220, um, but what we did was we took it as I got it from eBay, okay, and we sharpened up uh, one of my old neckers and the large blade on my Victor Knox uh, Tinker and did some rope cutting tests with it. Okay, so we did the first test uh, on both blades on camera and then uh, I went ahead and shut you down and I was just going to do one test each on, you know, another one with the Necker and another one with the Tinker but I ended up doing two each. Okay, so when you're doing tests like this you know, the um, the more runs that you do you know, usually the better your results are, okay? Um, I'm not a machine, neither is anybody else that I know of. Um, so you can do the same test three times and wind up with, you know, 10, 15, 20% variation. Um, you know, and I think that might even be on a good day. So uh, the more times you run through a test, the better. But anyway, so uh, what we got with the stone, like I said, as I got it from eBay, um, we just put some mineral oil on it and started sharpening. The neck knife, um, we gained four pounds um, over a hundred cuts in the manila rope. Okay, so, um, you know, we sharpened it up, brought it to a burr, brought the burr on the other side, uh, moved the burr back and forth to weaken it, and then sheared it um, all on the same stone. I want to say that the first cut took about five pounds worth of pressure and then the hundredth cut took you know nine to ten pounds of pressure something like that so that's what I'm talking about the four pound gain over the hundred cuts so the Necker did uh, gain four pounds over a hundred cuts the first time and then five pounds over a hundred cuts the other two times the uh, Victor Knox Tinker the large blade did um, 50 cuts and gained eight to ten pounds uh, over the 50 cuts, and then the second two tests, that was the first test, the second two tests uh, gained 5 to 7 pounds off the second test, and 6 to 7 pounds off the third test. Okay, so um, we got some pretty good numbers here to start with. Um, let's go ahead, now we're going to take a look at the stone, um, just as it is, because I know we've cleaned it up considerably just by using the thing. Okay, and then, um, one of the last comments that I haven't responded to yet um, over the last couple of videos that I've shot on when we were conditioning somebody said blowing the stone out with compressed air to get some of that junk out well I don't typically have compressed air in the shop I mean I do have an air compressor um, but it you know I don't run it very often I don't use compressed air a whole lot but I got thinking about it and I've got carbon choke cleaner right there next to the sink all the time so we'll look at the stone the way it is We'll blast it out with some carbon choke cleaner, see what that does, and then um, we'll go ahead and condition it with uh, uh, the thumblers, tumbler uh, powder, the coarse, and then we'll do the fine, and then we'll go ahead and sharpen up these knives and do another test and see what happens. Okay. So let's take a look at this stone first. See if we've done it any good by uh, just sharpening with it. Okay, first of all, let's let's get a a big view of it. That's right, and we can't quite get it all the way in on the lowest magnification. You know, I would say this looks a little bit cleaner than the first time we looked at it. I mean we still got kind of a matte look to it uh, you know like a matte of trash inside the stone um, and the sharp points on there. Let's look at a different spot. Okay um, just by looking at the stone I can kinda of see you know that we have cleaned it up considerably. Now the there's shop dust on it it still feels really smooth to my fingertip though. 
All right, so let's go ahead and go all the way in. Oh, look at that. We have cleaned it up considerably just by sharpening with it. Last time we could not see individual crystals or shards, and now we can. Um, they still look pretty dull to me, and it still looks like there's quite a bit of trash in there, but it looks like we've cleaned it up considerably. Now the rest of it, the whole thing looked like this when we started, or worse. Yeah, there's still quite a few, um, quite a bunch of trash still left in this stone. Yep. Okay, so, uh, you know, let's try to mark that. I don't know, the, uh, the carbon choke cleaner might go ahead and erase this, but it might not. Let's... Okay, let's put that, uh, let's see if we can find it. Ah, there we go. I used a, a red sharpie to mark a line on the stone. Okay, so at the top edge of that, that sharpie, that's what that stone looks like. Maybe once we blast it with a carbon choke cleaner, we'll be able to look at the same section of stone. Okay, so we just got some gum out, uh, jet spray, car choke and carbon choke cleaner. There's the trash can. You know, it looks a little bit cleaner. The um, the red Sharpie mark, it looks like I can kind of barely tell where it was. Let's see if we can see more of it under magnification there. No, I'm not seeing our red mark, but it still looks like we have the same, uh, yeah, I don't think that took a whole lot of trash out, if it took any. Okay, so our next step is going to be, we're going to go ahead and dress the face of this stone. Okay, so um, one thing I did, I went ahead and looked it up online, uh, as far as the, the grit ratings for the, uh, the Thumblers, uh, coarse and fine. What I found on the internet from an eBay seller who was selling the stuff um, said that the coarse was 6090, the fine was 120 one, or 220, uh, the polish and the pre-polish was 5000 or 500 and 1200, 1200 grit. What I did was looking at this, here's some 36 grit graded stuff. And here's the coarse. Um, let's see, and here is some 6090. It looks to me to be an awful lot closer to the, the 36 grit than it does to the 6090. So I'm going to call it like, I don't know, 40 or 50 grit, something like that. which means that it ought to rip this, this stone down pretty fast. Okay. So let's get all this out of the way. Okay, so we're just going to take a little bit of the stuff. Pellet tins sure work really good for, um, for holding on to this stuff. Spray down some water. 
we'll be able to tell um, you know when all the trash is gone but we'll go ahead and mark it up anyways um, turn your volume down because this typically is kind of loud now when you're doing this you pretty much just use the weight of the stone okay you don't if you put too much weight on there then it just it, it eats the grit up before the grit can eat the stone up Okay, we're getting uh, the edges of the stone pretty good. Okay, I don't know if y'all can hear that change in pitch. Um, it's pretty much all broke down. So let me go ahead and wash the stone off. Okay, and that was just a quick, uh, you know, pour some water over it into the, the trash can. And you can really see, you know, we've got the edge of this, edges, or the ends, you know already flattened down and lapped but we still got to make it down to the center so typically when I'm doing this um, you know I'll do like two or three uh, applications of powder and then go ahead and uh, clean off the glass seems like if you go more than that then the old grit uh, dulls the new grit up too fast Okay, hear that pitch change? That one's pretty much done. Let me rinse it off. Okay, we are, oh, I'd say probably halfway to being done. We're to here and to here. But one thing I just thought about was, how about let's take a look at what this slurry looks like up underneath the scope. Okay, so we got a fairly clean paper towel, right? And there we've got some of the slurry. With a little bit of luck, we'll get to see what broken down 
loose silicon carbide looks like. Okay, let me swap slots with you. Well, look at there, that broken, uh, the slurry, which at this point we know, I mean, the only three things that we had on this, well, the four things that we had on this glass was, you know, water, and then we had the stone, the fine side of the stone, and then we had the Thumbler's coarse uh, silicon carbide, right? Well, this sure looks to me like the matte, you know, the nasty matte surface, um, on the stone before we started working. Oh, there's a couple of sharp particles still left in there. You know, that right there looks like a fresh, or a, um, what did I say we are going to call this, like 50 grit? That looks like a fresh, uh, fresher 50 grit piece of silicon carbide, but the rest of it's all broken down. That's pretty interesting, huh? Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and rinse this glass off. Because like I said, once you get too much of this slurry on here, once you get too much slurry on there, it seems like the slurry itself dulls the new grit at about the same rate that the new grit cuts the stone. So it's important to kind of keep uh, you know, flushing away all the the old uh, the old grit. Okay, we're getting there, a little bit more. Okay, we're almost, we got just a little section right in here.
there we go, that pitch changed. And there. It's still just hanging on. You can see the last of the pencil marks there. Um, this is why I like that big that big sheet of glass that I get from the glass store. And you can you can make much bigger circles and it's it's much more efficient. But we already had this out and we're almost done, I think. Okay, it looks like all of our uh, our pencil marks are gone. Okay, so all of our pencil marks are gone, right? Okay, so now let's do one more round on nice clean uh, plate with uh, the coarse stuff. Okay, just to, um, you know, to make sure that we've got it all down to, you know, this grit here. Because you can, you know, since it's kind of floating on a couple of points, um, you can wear away the pencil before the whole surface is all the way down, right? Okay, let's rinse that off. Okay, so I did, um, you know, rinse off the majority of the stuff into the trash can, and then uh, just to be just so we get a real nice view of it, I went ahead and rinsed the rest of it under running water because it's got pressure, you know, from that running water coming down. We'll take a look at this surface underneath the scope. Now remember this is a 300-ish grit surface. Um, lapped to about 50 grit is what we're going to be looking at. And we're looking at an awful lot of water too.
Let's shake it off a couple of more times. And of course, all we're seeing is the water. All right, so what we're looking at here, like right over in this section, Okay, let's maybe shake it off some more here. Because what we've got, like I said, we've got a, a surface that's made up of 300 grit um, particles, right? But we've lapped it to a 50 grit finish. So what you're seeing is clumps clumps of 300 grit with 50 grit scratches in between okay um, you know I can kind of sort of see it um, through the water you know maybe we will hit it with a carbon choke cleaner because that you know carbon choke cleaner evaporates so fast there Yep, so what we've got is clumps of 300 grit, okay, with 50 grit scratches kind of in between them. Let's look on the side here. Yeah, you can kind of see that. So like when we did the coarse side, you know, the coarse side is, uh, that's the center part. Yeah, so the coarse side is you know, 50 grit or 100 grit-ish particles, you know, that we lapped with 50 grit um, compound. So you've got kind of a match going on there, right? Whereas the fine side is a little bit different. Okay, so now let's go ahead and uh, get everything cleaned up. You know, we're just gonna water, rinse this off into the trash can, and then we will start with 220 grit. You know, I'm not too sure, I mean, we've got, this is 28 minutes. Um, you know, I was kind of thinking about editing this so that you didn't have to watch the whole thing. But honestly, I think I'm just going to leave it as here. We'll make it like a two-part. And that way you can, um, you can see real life time, how long it takes, uh, well, how long it took this particular stone um, to go from you know nasty and dished out a little bit uh, to completely fresh surface okay so we got that all cleaned up now we've got our thumblers fine all right now this fine uh, like I said that eBay seller said that it was uh, I got a bit too much there said it was 120 uh, to 220 and comparing it to the 220 graded stuff that I have I would tend to agree that that's that's about what it is okay now when we were working with the 50 grit stuff it was really loud okay this 220 grit stuff is uh, a lot more pleasant Also, the finer the grits, um, the less water it takes. And right here, I can start to feel the stone sticking to the glass. Like right, right there a second ago, you could kind of see the glass. There you go. See the glass kind of moving? We're starting to stick to the glass, so... Um, you know, so it is definitely a much finer uh, abrasive. Now it should start sticking. Actually, we might just make this, uh, we're at 30 minutes. 
we might just make this like a 35 minute video and have it all the way lapped and ready to go for the, the rope cutting tests. All right, let's rinse it off. Okay, so we've got a consistent feeling surface except for in the middle. So we'll do this, uh, we'll rinse this off. We'll probably do this at least once more. I think that's plenty of water on there already. So once it, once it starts getting to this point where it starts sticking, okay, um, make sure you pick it up and put it back down, you know, a lot more frequently. Just to make sure that you're getting fresh, fresh abrasive underneath the stone. Okay, that's starting to feel pretty good. While we're here, let's go ahead and dress the corners. Okay, now let's finish off, off on fresh powder, and then we'll be ready for the next one. So instead of cleaning all that up right now, um, we'll go ahead and take a look at things right now and see what we see. Oh, we've got the water we're seeing. Okay, so I hit it with a carbon choke cleaner. Let's look at it with a naked eye first. Now that feels nice and consistent to me. Okay. Um, we do need to put the fresh powder on there because it feels um, a little bit glazed yet. But see how much nice, uh, you know, that mat, the mat, you know, the mat of trash is all gone now. Okay, and now we're down to, you know, roughly 300 grit um, abrasive with a 220 grit finish. So let me uh, rinse off the plate and then we will do our last, uh, now it's all flat and ready. We'll do our final conditioning and then the stone will be ready for the, the second part of the test. Okay, so I rinsed it off and wiped off the majority of the water. Um, um, you know, I want to say that was, uh, boy, I don't even know how to tell you how much that was. That was, uh, That's an eighth inch rod. That was about that much powder. 
you know, so that's not even, you know, a quarter of a teaspoon or anything like that. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of water on here. Maybe one more squirt. Okay, now this time is very, very light, just the weight of the stone. This is where actually conditioning and finishing up conditioning so that we leave the stone with a nice sharp surface. And that's about all we want to do. Now that stone feels um, smooth yet a little toothy. We hit it with a carbon choke cleaner. Okay, so now what we see is that same 300 grit abrasive with a 220 grit finish, but all of our points look nice and sharper. Okay, and that, that's what I feel when I run my fingertip across it. Okay, these, these older stones seem to me, once, even once you have them conditioned to 220 grit, they seem to me to be a finer abrasive than what the the newer stones are even finished at 220 grit so um, you know I'm pretty sure that the stones have have changed over time uh, you know one that's 40 years old is probably not going to be exactly the same as the one that you get at fresh out of the box today um, that just seems to me I've probably got oh I don't know eight eight of these older uh, silicon carbide stones floating around here or more um, and maybe a half a dozen of the newer ones and it seems like the older ones uh, are a finer uh, finer grit so you know these newer ones if they're 300 it seems like the older ones might be 400 or 450 or something like that so um, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up and then we're gonna start another another video and we will sharpen up these knives with the freshly conditioned stone uh, with this right here and we'll do some rope, rope cutting tests on those and see if we get any big difference. Uh, again, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can visit me on the web, caltoncutlery.com. I hope you enjoyed the video and we will see you here in a little bit.